in an area, Puget Sound, where what may be the most destructive weapon in history, the Trident submarine and missile system, is about to be deployed. That will not happen in silence. Last summer, in a public talk, I identified Trident as the Auschwitz of Puget Sound. Seattle, Washington, the most northerly ice-free port on the American West Coast, is important for U.S. defense and defense is important for Seattle. Thousands of Seattleites take a short ferry ride every day across Puget Sound to the Bangor Naval Base, home of the most destructive weapon on Earth. Large salaries earned in the defense industry have enabled thousands more to purchase comfortable homes along the shoreside. As the ferry glides slowly into dock, first impressions are of landing on a harmless, sleepy, wooded island away from it all. But behind the facade of secure homes and a peaceful neighborhood lies something people living here know about but wish they didn't. A war machine with a frightening capacity for death and destruction. The Trident submarine base at Bangor. The submarines using the Bangor base are technically the most modern and destructive developed. They patrol the world's oceans, remaining submerged for up to 70 days. Each submarine can fire nearly 200 nuclear warheads. People didn't wish to know what happened behind the fence at Auschwitz, and if they did, they did nothing about it. Archbishop Raymond Hunthausen of Seattle maintains that the same thing is true of the fence at Bangor. In considering a Christian response to nuclear arms, I think we have to begin by recognizing that our country's overwhelming array of nuclear arms has a very precise purpose. It is meant to protect our wealth. The United States is not illogical in amassing the most destructive weapons in history. We need them. We're the richest people in history. Jesus was addressing that kind of situation when he said, alas to you who are rich. He said we would mourn and weep. He said in essence that if we go that way of outrageous wealth and power, we will get the very nuclear war with which we threaten others. God created it. The native peoples called it Chewana, Great River, source of human life for 12,000 years, home to Salish, Kootenai, Cayuse, Flathead, Nez Perce, this living water is so important to all of God's creatures. God created Mother Earth for our use. And we, as his creatures also, need to take care of these many things that the Creator has given us. Water is, uh, for Christians, is very... Uh, central to our Christian life because Jesus chose water as the sacrament which initiates us into his body and the world, the church. And uh, water is uh, very connected with life. Many years ago when my father was teaching down at Preston, Washington, I was about six years old then, and we decided to take a trip down to Peach, Washington, which was part of their school district. 
And as we were going down, my dad was mentioning the fact that this was going to all be underwater when Grand Coulee Dam went in. And I immediately got very, very afraid <laughs> that that was going to happen before we got out of there. <laughs> so we went down to Peach and took pictures, and all I could think of was, let's get out of here before the water comes. <laughs> The Columbia River defines the economy, politics, and lifestyle of four western states and British Columbia. The fourth largest river in North America and its tributaries create a 260,000 square mile watershed. Flowing over 1,200 miles from Columbia Lake to the Pacific Ocean, its life-giving waters bestow beauty and abundance in all directions. Welcome back to Real to Real. Well, up next, St. James Cathedral. Of course, it's a landmark in the Seattle area. You'll see the lighted towers at night. It's also the home of Catholics in western Washington, being the Archdiocesan Cathedral. Well, now we're going to take a look back at the history of St. James. It's been around for about 85 years, as well as a look ahead and to some proposed changes. St. James Cathedral was built between 1905 and 1907 under the courageous leadership of Archbishop Edward J. O'Day. The cathedral has stood as the spiritual symbol of strength and vitality of the Catholic faith in Western Washington. It's a wonderful building. It's, a, it's an architectural treasure. I think uh, anyone who's been in the cathedral knows that. It's, it's beautiful from the outside. It's a, it's a commanding, imposing building, the likes of which Seattle uh, has no other. And uh, inside, too, it's a graceful architectural building in a, in a style that uh, you'd have to go a long ways to find uh, duplicated. So it's a great building. It's a, it's a wonderful, sacred place where people have gathered for a whole long time. 